Our first caller is Olivia from Toronto, Canada. Hi, Olivia. How can we help you? Hey, guys. I'm a big fan of your show. I uh, I actually just started listening a few weeks ago, and I'm like binging a few episodes every day. It's awesome. Oh, thank you. Um, wow, noob. I just bought Maps Performance. I've been doing it for, I, I just did it for a week now. Um, I'm a week into it. But I was wondering if there's any changes or modifications I can make to the program to enhance my uh, performance in my sport, which is football, um, like American football. Oh, very wow. cool. What, uh, what position? So I play wide receiver and quarterback, uh, mainly quarterback in the summer and then wide receiver for my university. Awesome. And then is and this is uh full full on American football, so it's tackle, correct? Uh no, it, so it's contact flag. Um I guess I should have specified. So okay. we we block um and we have like an O-line and a D-line, but we don't wear equipment. We pull flags instead of tackling. So it's more um it's more speed related than than I guess strength. Okay. So the so the couple things I would recommend, one is uh continue to practice the skills of your particular sport. So sometimes the mistake that people make when they start working out to improve their performance is they trade skill training with just getting stronger in the gym. Um, and this is a this is not necessarily a good idea because if you get really strong but you lose some of your skill, then that strength on the field doesn't translate very well. So make sure you continue with your skills training. As far as modifying the workout, um, MAPS performance is really, really well put together for, mm -hmm. uh, for, for general overall performance. The modifications would be need to be very, very specific to the individual, and I would focus mainly on uh, areas that you notice you tend to have pain or mobility issues. So if you notice that you have issues like in your hips or your knees uh, or your shoulders, especially after playing you know, a really intense game, then I would use a program like uh, Maps Prime Pro to identify those areas because that will give you the most bang for your buck in terms of the performance on the field. Yeah, I'm curious as to you know what what you see in there that you want to modify a little like more specifically towards football because it's pretty close uh, to something I would program to a football player kind of going off season then bringing them into season. Um, you know, there's some things that you can do if you are well versed in Olympic lifts or, or you can do a hang clean. That's, you know, the opportunity there when, you know, we have high pulls like programmed in there. That's something that I do uh, suggest like some athletes, if they have training already uh, where they could substitute uh, and add a little bit more, uh, you know, type like power lifts uh, or, or Olympic lifts rather uh, in that direction. So other than that, I think it's pretty specifically. Well, what about built for that? What about, what about, I, I mean, what do, what do you think, Justin, about adding either like some footwork work drills to mobility days? So I could see like mm. acceleration, deceleration, mm -hmm. working on and doing like footwork drills um, that would carry over into her sport on mobility days. Sure. Like I could, uh, yeah. And, and even in phase three, I mean, we have like it's it's speed power. And so there's a lot of acceleration, deceleration type uh, explosive moves, uh, you know, that you're going to be working on. I, I do see some some value in footwork. However, uh, you know, if you're going to get more specific in, in the endurance part of it, that's where you can structure it around, uh, you know, and time it around the amount of, of, of effort that you're going to put out per play. So you, you can do more like 50 yard sprints. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. I'm thinking, this, I, I'm not like, of course, the way the programming is set up is to, to get her better overall on that. Uh -huh. But I mean, very specific drills for a wide receiver and a, and a quarter or a wide receiver or a quarterback. So like a throwing drill, yeah. like a run, foot run your patterns. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, run your drills. run your your patterns. Doing the takeoff for wide receiver stuff. Accelerating your cuts. Yep. Um. And just in those short bursts and and p p programming that on like mobility days. Since the program itself on foundation foundational days are going to give her the overall strength. Yeah. I I would I would focus on maybe adding yeah. those. And into when the you routine. do that, just make sure you don't go too intense with it for the mobility days. Uh, there is like so as you get further in the program, you know it actually focuses more on the endurance, uh, you know endurability portion of it. So where I would probably add even more of that. But yeah, just to maintain the skills and the movement, uh, I think that is a good idea. Yeah, and a, a big um, factor that can influence what kind of drills you would do is is your experience with your sport so how long have you been playing uh football competitively 
So I played basketball for like six or seven years and I got a few like uh, scholarships to the U.S. But um, I, I had like a bad concussion at the time and I had to give them up, took a year off and then I found football just by chance. So I've been playing now. I transitioned to football for I think five or six years now. I was receiver for a long time and now they're putting me at like a sort of a running quarterback sort of thing. Okay. No, that, and that, that helps a lot, right? Because if you're if you don't have a ton of experience, let's say you're athletic – but you don't have a ton of experience playing the sport, then your probably biggest value is going to be just playing scrimmages, practicing as often as possible and getting really good at it. But because you've been playing for about five years, some of these these drills that the guys just mentioned uh, would probably provide you a lot of value. Just remember that. Remember, uh, when you're following mass performance, what you can, imp- what you can expect is strength, power, durability but what you won't get from it is improvement in skill so practice the skill Mm -hmm. along with following the program what you don't want to necessarily do and i want to stress this is get really strong but also lose skill because then you'll find yourself on the field uh not necessarily any better off even though you're stronger because you've lost some of your skill and that's why i I envision i mean if you're a client of mine this is what i envision i envision uh having three mobility days and you I, i imagine that you have access to one of your wide receivers one of your friends yeah, and, yeah. And, okay, so I would go down to like a, a field somewhere outside with with one of your wide receiver friends, and I would do start the the day with mobility work. So the, both of you do some mobility drills to warm up and work on your mobility, and then you go right into your your footwork drills. So running little routes and plays and and dropping back, and and that's what the rest of the day would look like. I think you doing that is going to continue to. It increase your skills in the sport, and then the programming will take care of everything else. Yeah, and if you don't have Maps Prime Pro, we'll send that over to you, Olivia, because I think that you're going to find a lot of value in that, especially for the areas that tend to bother you after playing or practicing really hard. So you'll pick the area that tends to bother you, and then practice the movements that are in Maps Prime Pro for those areas, um, and that should help you quite a bit. Thank you so much. That's awesome. I just have one more part of the question. So I just finished actually a month ago or two months ago, a 15 week, like progressive overload, like lifting program that I sort of found online. Um, and I, I put on 10 pounds, like, you know, some muscle, whatever. Um, but I, I kind of hindered my progress with overtraining, um, and, and whatnot, but I still had some progress and, but because I've put on 10 pounds, I'm noticing, like I sort of did what you guys did. I put on the strength, but not skill specific. And I, I'm feeling it a bit on the field when I'm going to jump and stuff. So I've been trying to be in like a calorie deficit a little bit to to shed some of the weight for my summer season. Can you be on like in can you do maps performance well in a calorie deficit or sure. would you guys not yeah, recommend sure. that? Or? No, no, yeah, you, sure. Yeah, great idea. You totally can. I just wouldn't do too big of a deficit when right. training really hard. But here's the other thing too, is that uh, you know, I, I don't know what your program was before. You said progressive overload. I'm assuming it was very strength and muscle building focused. Yeah. Just practicing uh, your skills, jumping, you know, lateral movement. Uh, you can actually take that strength and start to uh, kind of convert it to more performance-based strength because you can get really strong from just doing barbell squats and build muscle. And for most people, that'll make them jump higher and move faster. But if you were an athlete yeah. before and you moved really well and then you built that muscle but you didn't let the skills follow it, you might actually lose a little bit of that that ability uh, because the weight to strength ratio or explosive strength ratio might change a little bit. So sometimes you don't necessarily need to lose the weight unless it was body fat. Sometimes all you need to do is train that new weight in ways that make it uh, more beneficial for your sport. Okay. Yeah, sure. That makes sense. Get used to my new, my new extra eight pounds. (laughs) Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Thanks for calling. Okay. Thanks so much for having me and thanks. Thanks for everything. You guys are awesome. No problem. All right. Yeah, I, I I remember back in the day when I was would compete in uh, in grappling that I the, I've always loved resistance training way more than I loved any other, anything else, right? And I would go through these phases where I would put on muscle, mm-hmm. and I would only do like one day a week of you know judo or jujitsu, and then I'd go back to training real hard in those sports, <clears throat> and although I was bigger and stronger, I wasn't really performing any better. Uh, yeah. And I was just like, and I knew why. It was because I lost skill, but I gained strength. I mean, skill is, if you were to list in sports performance, skill is number one. 
then all the contributing factors to skill follow. But skill has got to be number one. I mean, I, I feel like, uh, and, and Justin, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't think this is uh, the three of us. This are... meeting is being recorded. <laughs> it's being recorded. <laughs> <Adam>. <laughs> thank, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I think of the three of us, I don't think this, is, uh, this isn't my expertise, but I've trained many clients like this. And my recommendation would be, you know, at least three days of the mobility work with the skills training with the foundational days. If I saw that her 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 strength and or her training was starting to hinder her movement on the field, she's getting slower. Her reaction time isn't there. She's not improving on her skill. I'd, I would yeah. scale back another day off the of foundations and increase to another mobility yeah. and skills training day. Yeah, definitely. I think that's that's smart. And I, I do like evaluate to whether or not they're like a beginner beginning athlete if they've already established a good foundational strength to work with or you know if this is somebody that's a little more seasoned and a lot of times like you don't really need to add a lot more strength to these athletes I think that's something that uh, you know is is pushed a lot on athletes but you know it does tend to the, the focus gets uh, you know shifted in terms of like if they just focus more on their skill or on their overall quality of their movement you know it may uh, aid even more in their performance than uh, previously so I I think it's it's really and I had the same experience where I gained weight uh, because my position had changed. I had to be like an inside backer versus an outside backer. So I had to gain like 20 pounds and coming back was very difficult because I didn't maintain all the skills training that went with uh, that added weight. So just getting acclimated to the new body, uh, you know, that took time on its own. Yeah. And one more thing, and athletes don't usually understand this until much later. The biggest bang for your buck that you'll get with sports, especially if you play pretty consistently year after year, is just preventing injury. Like yes, just focus on if that, you. That's the real game. If you just focused on preventing yeah. injury, well, at the high level, at the high level, that's yeah, all. That, it's that's more on. the experience. That's it, athlete. especially yeah. at the high level. Yeah, definitely. yeah. Once you once you get to you know college pro and so like that, they don't. That's it's all about injury prevention. Yeah. 